Ladies and gentlemen, let's find out what 17.5 is. Nine thrusters. 35 double unders. 95 pounds for the men, 65 pounds for the women. 10 rounds, four time is 17.5. Simple, elegant, CrossFit. Very straightforward, but you still need to know the rules. Ladies and gentlemen, for 17.5 to count, it needs to look like this. At the call of three, two, one, go, the athlete will perform nine thrusters and 35 double unders for a total of 10 rounds. This is a task priority workout, meaning the athlete will finish the work as quickly as possible and their time will be their final score. There is a 40 minute time cap for this workout. All right, just three notes for you guys tonight. Number one, you're going to finish this workout. I know you are, but there is a mercy kill at 40 minutes. Number two, your friends cannot help you this week. They need to leave your equipment completely alone. And lastly, but not least, you need to leave your jump rope on the ground. You can't hang it on anything. But for more on that, we're going to go to the director of the CrossFit Games, Dave Castro. Dave, you're going to expand on that. Yeah, so you want to talk about the rope. You know, during the, uh, some of the other stages of the Open, people have done a lot of things that are uh, gaming it almost. And with the rope, there is going to be zero gaming. You can't put it over your shoulder. You can't tuck it in your pocket. You can't hand it to a friend to hold. You can't put it on a rig. You can't have a floor with a six inch elevated floor right next to it where you set your rope. You will put the rope down on the floor, completely on a level floor with you, and you will pick it up from there. So the bar and the rope will lay flat on the floor. Anything else, we're gonna um, reject those videos, reject those scores. So don't try to game this, it's that simple. Put the fucking rope on the floor and put the barbell on the floor. Thank you. All right, simple and straightforward. And hey, you also can't look as good as Dave Castro. How good does that guy look tonight? All right, I'm Ant. This is a fun workout, but I want to know what you guys are saying. So we're going to go back to Brooke Ant, our social media correspondent. Brooke, what's the internet saying? Everyone's still just like, honestly really, really excited. No one seems to be surprised that we're seeing thrusters. Maybe more people a little bit that we're seeing double unders. Um, the crowd looks to be equally split between who they want to win. There's a lot of love for both of the girls. We have Lizette Gallardo. Um, she says both of these girls are amazing and beautiful. Duh. Of course they are. We have Quinn Borsma fell out of the shower because I'm so excited to see this announcement. I like to see stuff like this. What are you doing watching in the shower? <laughs> He's got it like on the side, you know, on his phone. That's dangerous. Uh, lots of people excited for it because it's a workout they can do. That actually speaks, home, speaks to me a lot because I have a lot of friends back home from my box that do get a little bit intimidated with the movements sure. and the weight, you know, and a lot of people can move that weight and a lot of people can move that rope. So it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt yeah. and you've got to go fast. You're going to see yeah. these girls go fast. Yeah, You're going to see them be very precise with the technique and what they do with the rope. All right. We want you guys to continue to be part of the conversation all night long on Facebook Live, but right now the action is almost underway, so we're going to Sean Woodland for the action. He's got two other very special CrossFit women with him. Thank you, Ro, here with Margot Alvarez and Tanya Wagner. Well, um, no dumbbells, so we had that going for us, but from the competitor standpoint, what are you and all of your fellow games competitors thinking after you heard that announcement? I like it personally. I'm excited for the thruster and the double unders, especially the double unders. Um, I think it's going to be great to watch these two women throw down. What were your first impressions when you heard the announcement? Spicy. This one's going to hurt, and yes. if it doesn't hurt you, you didn't go fast enough. <laughs> what we are about to see is not going to look like what's going to happen when the majority of us do this workout. So for some tips and tricks on how we can get our best score possible, here's CrossFit's director of training and certification, Nicole Carroll. Nicole Carroll back again with your tips for the Open. This week, 17.5, final week of the 2017 Open season, and we've got an awesome little 10-round couplet of thrusters and double-unders. 
Getting ready to do this one, my plan going in is to try not to break anything up, but I know I'm looking at 10 rounds, so I don't want to go so fast or hard out of the gate that it forces me to break up thrusters or take really long rests in my transitions or causes me to mess up on the double unders. Just finished this one up, I got 9.03. I was super happy with how I stuck to my strategy. I did mess up one double under, but otherwise it went pretty well. As expected, this one had me breathing hard, but it also had me dealing with some shoulder fatigue. Something I recommend on the double unders is relaxing through the shoulders and spinning from the wrists as much as possible, as early as possible. You're looking at 10 rounds in this workout. Because of this, it is wise not to overdo it too soon. It's much better to get a little ways into this workout and realize, hey, I can pick up the pace, than it is to get a little ways into this workout and think, uh-oh, I went out too hard. Transitions play a significant role in this workout. There are a lot of them, which gives a lot of opportunity for time to collect there. This means we want to move deliberately and quickly through the transitions, but definitely don't want to rush or get so frantic that we're not composed enough to hit that double under set successfully. You might be looking at the thrusters in this workout and thinking, wow, that's a lot of reps and this weight is not necessarily light for me, but that's okay. The good news is that this one has a 40 minute time cap, which gives us the opportunity to go a little heavier than we normally might, gut it out, even if we have to break up the thruster reps right from round one. This is the last workout of the 2017 open season and a really good time to take a step back and look at how far you've come this season. Maybe it's your first time participating in the open. Maybe it's your first time doing all the workouts as prescribed. Maybe you PR'd your snatch or got your first bar muscle up. Whatever it was, take a moment to step back and appreciate it. And then go crush this one. Give everything you've got, not only to the workout, but to the community around you. That's really where the magic of the open comes from and every single one of you plays a part in it. From the bottom of my heart, thank you for that. Go get them and good luck. Thank you, Nicole, and you can watch that entire video on the CrossFit Journal site. Tanya, now that you've had some chance to sort of chew this over a little bit, what would you be watching when you watch these two throw down? What I'm watching for is going to be first the thrusters. They have to be conservatively quick. That 90 is a lot, and it's going to, you're going to feel that a little later on in the workout. Composure and precision on the double unders, one mistake could be devastating. And then speedy transitions, 19 transitions to be exact. That's a lot, a lot of wasted time could happen, so I expect to see a lot of quick right to one, right to the bar, right to the rope. For people who are looking to go to regionals, the competitors, what's the big hang up here? Uh, I, I, just like she said, I think that transition time is gonna be crucial. Make sure you place your bar and your rope close enough that you're minimizing the amount of time. Because like she said, 19 transitions, if it's at least two seconds, that's yeah. a lot of costly time right there. All right, 17.5 is about ready to get started. Katrin Davis' daughter taking on Sarah Sigma's daughter here in the new home of the CrossFit Games, Ten Madison, seconds. Wisconsin. Here's Dave Castro, the director of the CrossFit Games, to get things started. Three, two, one, go. Here we go, 17.5. Katrin Davis' daughter, Sarah Sigma's daughter. Ten rounds, nine thrusters at 65 pounds and 35 double-unders. want to thank... Margo Alvarez for stopping by. She'll be back with us later on for Roe versus Boz. And both women done with their first round of thrusters at the same time and now onto the jump rope. I like the way both women were nice and conservative, breathing on the thrusters. That's going to be crucial here because those thrusters have to be at a pace they can catch their breath. 35 double unders is a short number for these ladies, and they're going to rip them out. 440 total repetitions and both women through round one. Katrin Davis out right back to the barbell as is Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Katrin had a really quick transition there from rope down and right to the bar and she also set her jump rope down perfectly so she can go right back and get started. Look at that, two steps back and she picks it up. David Zotter is just slightly ahead of Sigmund Zotter. Now it becomes a question of who maintains this pace. That's the thing, if this were a five round workout, it's so different than 10 rounds. These ladies are very, they're obviously very, very strong. They're very fast, but this is where you have speed and precision come into play because in later rounds, when you're a little taxed and fatigued, that's where the double under mistakes could happen. Catherine Davis' daughter's on round three. She got back to the barbell first and she's about a half a rep ahead of Sarah Sigma's daughter. As neither woman has showed 
any signs of slowing down here. Again, 10 rounds, nine thrusters, 35 double unders for a total of 440 repetitions. And those reps will be counted in the white box next to each woman's name. The leader will be highlighted in blue. What I love about these two athletes is they came into the sport not as really specialists in one area. They were just overall very well-rounded athletes who just excelled by doing CrossFit. And I love that about them. They have such great uh, you know, comparison head-to-head. -head. But between the ears is really where we typically see the difference. And I was going to give Sarah you know, the advantage here because usually she can, on, on events where you can go a little more crazy and not stay as controlled, Sarah usually does better. Doesn't always help her in the long run in a whole weekend kind of event. But I love to see Katrin being a little spicier, a little spicier. I love to see that out of her. And now we have our first trip of the double unders. That was Sarah Sigmundson on the right of the screen. And that's allowed Katrin Davis out to open up a handful of the four or five rep lead on her. And that, if they keep the speed, it's going to be hard to make up. And that's exactly what you talked about on the double unders. The double unders is at 35 reps. You can get so many in in a short time. And you can miss so many in a short time. That's why it's really important to be controlled with that. Davis out on the round five, as is Sigmund's daughter. Davis daughter on the right, Sigmund's daughter on the left. And Sigmund's daughter is trying to regain some of those reps she lost because of the trip on the double under. Davis daughter is continuing this pace back to the jump rope. And Sigmund's daughter trying to close the gap. It's good to see Sarah pull it together there and stay relaxed on that set. So hard to shake those off because you're fighting the fatigue as well. But she really does look like she got it relaxed. The other thing that Sarah does is she gets that first jump right away with a double, no waste of extra effort. Same with Katrin. That's gonna help save precious seconds as well. That's the halfway point of this workout as far as reps are concerned. Again, 440 total reps. Five rounds to go. For Catherine Davis out the two-time defending fittest woman on earth, and Sarah Sigmund's daughter, the woman who has finished in third place two years in a row at the games. And it's just so hard for Sarah to make up any of that time now. The only thing she can hope for is that for her to have Davis' daughter have a mistake. Other than that, I don't know if she's going to be able to catch her. It's going to be tough to have Captain Davis on her make a mistake. Sarah Sigmund's on her is back to the bar. Right behind Captain Davis on her. About two reps, three reps behind Davis on her. As we're past four minutes in this workout. The only way you can make a thruster be faster is to pull the bar back down. As soon as you're locked out, pull it back down and start squatting before the bar comes to your shoulders. That'd be the only thing Sarah can do to go any faster with those nine thrusters. Davis on her, back to the jump rope she sort of stumbled getting started but she has yet to miss a rep when we talk about Katrin Davis daughter we talk about composure consistency control confidence these are all words that we see throughout the entire weekend of the game for the week of the game and I love seeing that in a workout she talks about how dialed in she is every single time she trains in Boston with Ben Bergeron and we're seeing what that does right here under the pressure under the lights with all the people when, when it matters and when it counts. I'd love to see that. Davis daughter through 317 of the 440 reps. Sarah Sigmund's daughter is right behind her, but it was that costly miss on the double unders that has put Sarah Sigmund's daughter behind Captain Davis' daughter. I expect, you know, hearing this workout, thinking about double unders, there are times when they just get, they just, you mess up. And I was thinking, I think we're going to see a lot of repeats on this workout. People should do this one perfect, and they're going to keep going. It's not too heavy that they can't repeat this one multiple times to get it just perfect. Yeah, especially when you're talking about competitors who a trip to the region is maybe on the line here. Every second is really going to count. And now David's daughter is done, and here comes Sarah Sigmund's daughter, and Sarah has managed to catch up a little bit with Katrin Davis on about one, maybe two reps behind her. 440 total reps, that's the magic number here, and 17.5 presented by Zebia here at the Monona Terrace in Madison, Wisconsin, the new home of the CrossFit Games. I can't believe she did it, but she closed that gap. And now we're neck and neck back to the barbell. Final round. And Sarah looks like she's even faster here, using the momentum of the crowd. 
Sarah Siegmund's daughter has taken the lead and is back to the jump rope. What a confidence builder this would be for Sarah Siegmund's daughter. If she can go unbroken, she's going to best Catherine Davis out at 17-5. And now a trip for Davis' daughter, Sarah Siegmund's daughter. Smooth sailing. She is feisty. And, and she now a trip for Siegmund's daughter. But she has enough of a lead on Davis' daughter. And now Siegmund's daughter struggling. Here comes Catherine Davis' daughter. Six to go. Now five, four. Davis' daughter's creeping up. Sigmund's daughter with another trip. Davis' daughter will win. Just ahead of Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Just too many costly misses on the double unders. Came down to the last set of doubles. That was insane. A two second plus victory for Catherine Davis' daughter. But what a fight from that woman, Sarah Sigmund's daughter. It's Davis' daughter. Man, she looks dusted. Incredible. That was amazing. Sarah Sigmund's daughter just. Oh my word, so impressive. To make the move when she did was perfect. She didn't wait too long, that was that was critical, but she just gave it a little bit too much and could hold it together there in the end. And credit for both women for keeping their composure when they've missed. Let's take a look at the 5-11 replay here of what just went down. The barbell, no problem, but it came down to the jump rope. We wanted to see that tempo in the thruster was gonna be really important. And both women were very fast with it. Katrin Davis' daughter was really composed and precise on all 10 rounds of her double unders. Even though she had one little mistake, one little trip up, the composure at the end was what did it for her. Sarah was able to dig, dig in with her speedy transitions. They both were quick, but the last set of 35 double unders, Sarah just wasn't able to hold together. Those 35 had too many trip ups and wasn't able to hold that lead. Katrin's composure on the rope was what was able to get her that win. This was an awesome mix of speed and precision, an awesome test of fitness. Both women did great, but Katrin came out on top in the final. Just a great battle there in the final round between Katrin Davis' daughter and Sarah Sigmund's daughter. That was a blast to watch. And then this was when Sarah Sigmund's daughter actually had a chance to win. Got to the jump rope first on the final round, but then just started stringing together some misses as both athletes did, but it was Davis' daughter just two seconds ahead. Of Sarah Sigmund's daughter. What a way all that work through 10 rounds and it came down to the end like that. What a finish. And Davis daughter is still behind at this point. And even though she's behind with Katrin's composure and her rope speed, she maintains that confidence and that composure and does not have any other trip ups, and that's what got her the win there. Katrin Davis daughter holds off Sarah Sigmund's daughter. What a show! Here in Madison, that was a blast to watch. There are your final results. Sarah Sigmund's daughter, 656. Catherine Davis' daughter, 653. Rory McKernan is on the competition floor with a two-time fittest woman on earth. All right, Catherine, there was an early trip up for you. You fell behind. How do you keep your composure in that situation? Um, it's just, it's just me, you know? It's just me and the barbell and the double under of the barbell and double under. So as long as there's a trip up or there's anything, you just pick the barb again or you pick the robot up again and just go as hard as you can I'm trying to stay in the zone not focus on sarah it was hard you guys are crazy it was awesome <laughs> all right i know you focus on the process and not the outcome but what is the significance of winning head-to-head -head in this kind of an environment it's fun <laughs> it's always fun um but i'm just happy with my performance that was a really good one <laughs> <laughs> and that was a great show what do you guys think Give it up for Katrin David's daughter, guys. All right, thanks to both athletes. Right now, also thanks to our sponsor for 17.5, Zevia. Right now, they're giving 50% off all online orders. You go to their website, click on the banner, use the promo code 50OPEN2017, get 50% off your order. All right, lots more to come. Please don't go away, guys. The cooldown show is coming up. That will start back at HQ. Tommy Marquez, Pat Sherwood have Annie Sakamoto with them as well. And then we'll come back here. Dave Castro is going to sit down with Sarah Sigmund's daughter and Katrin David's daughter to debrief the craziness that just went down. You guys can all be a part of it, and you can be part of the conversation on Facebook. Then Sean Woodland's going to come down and operate that because I'm going backstage. I'm going to warm up. We got one more, me and Boz. And if it was a bar fight, look, I'm telling you, I'm like trying to bite this guy's ear off right now, going down fighting. So me and Boz, 17.5, that's exclusive to Facebook Live, so you gotta get to the CrossFit Games Facebook Live. Right now, we're gonna leave you with a preview 
of the 2016 documentary Fittest on Earth. It's available worldwide on the CrossFit Journal and 70 plus countries on iTunes. If you haven't done it yet, do yourself a favor, rent it or buy it, watch it. You will not be disappointed. Guys, we'll be right back after the Fittest on Earth. Welcome back inside the studio, everyone, for the Cool Down Show presented by Arosti. Great Odin's <laughs> Raven, that was a matchup. What a barn burner at the end. I think a lot of us had expected double unders and thrusters. I don't think anybody had expected a finish like that, though. So much respect for both the women. Katrin's so cool the whole time, but Sarah is exciting and she takes chances. Yep. I, it, they both came out hot, but really when we looked at it, it came down to that last round there with both athletes neck and neck trying to push it through the finish. And this is where the workout was won and lost at the same time. Yeah, it, it looked like it was Katrin's, right? Because Sarah had that trip early on and in such a tight race, one mistake we thought would be fatal, but that wasn't the case. No, and then really Sarah made up a lot of ground right at the very end there. We, we saw her take over on the last little bit of thrusters. She grabbed the rope. She was jumping right before Katrin was. Um, and then Katrin missed that, that double under early on. We thought, that's it. It's over. It's Sarah. Who would have thought she would have missed multiple reps of double unders? And the word of the day, you heard it from Rory, you heard it from Sean as well, was composure, composure. Even amidst all the trips, they would step through that rope as fast as they can because you don't know if the other athlete's going to trip. And lo and behold, they both kept doing it. Well, both of these women have their first attempt, at least, in the bag. And then looking at the overall standings for the women coming into this workout, they, we had a tight race at the top, first through fourth, separated by just eight points. Sarah is just one point away from the top. And, and when you think about what we just saw, what sort of impact could these performances have on the overall leaderboard? Oh, I mean, <laughs> Camille leblanc Bazinet is going to be like a comet rocketing to earth on this thing. She decimates thrusters when, inside our, of our community. The range of motion's beautiful for her. She's so close, she could potentially win the Open. Yep, and I can only imagine that Sarah will redo this workout. It's probably not gonna have devastating effects on her physically, so right. being only one point away, having that many trips in that last round, I can only imagine that she's gonna try and do this workout again. And both women were about 650, 655 range. You see anybody maybe dipping a little bit below that, or are they right about where, where people are capable of going? I don't think they're gonna dip much, but I mean, let's just say somebody had a beautiful, perfect, flawless run without those trips, then yeah, they can shave a few seconds off, but it's not going to be much. Those two women just about nailed it perfectly. Yeah, they were holding about a 40 second round, I think is what it comes out to. So that's my plan. 40 seconds, 41. <laughs> we're we'll going to watch you execute. Out. We'll see how it shakes out. <laughs> that's not going to be my plan, but over on the men's side, coming into this week, these were what the overall standings were. We had a nice mixture of some new faces making their name in the open, as well as some known athletes at the top. We have guys like Anthony Davis, Marcelo Bruno, James Kozlikowski, the full-time plumber, cracking the top 10. And then as you got toward this top five, it's, you know, some perennial games athletes. And at the top, Matt Fraser. Knowing this workout now, is anyone going to be able to catch him or is this another workout that he's just going to light up? Well, to me right now, it looks like the game's leaderboard last year. It's not how if he's going to win, it's how much is he going to win by. I mean, this workout with Matt Fraser, I'm, I'm sorry. I just want to sit back with some popcorn and just see how fast of a time can he pop up. He is running away with the open, and this is, this is just the, the cherry on top, honestly. So if Matt Fraser has this in the bag, per se, what other athlete do you see doing really well in this particular workout? On the men's side? Definitely Froning. I mean, I think he's going to make a move as well. It's, it, I don't think it's going to be a big enough move considering the point spread between him and Matt, but I definitely see Rich decimating this workout. And what well. about our old boy Josh Bridges? I uh -huh. mean, he has got the crazy switch, fantastic with thrusters, the engine through the roof. I mean, this is one that if he nails those points of performance, he could put up the fastest time in the world. Well, it's going to be exciting to watch. Let's head back out now to the venue in Madison, Wisconsin. Sean Woodland is standing by with director of the games, 
Dave Castro, Caption David's daughter, and Sarah Sigmund's daughter. Thank you, Tommy. Welcome back here to Madison, Wisconsin. Man, what a show you two just put on. Dave, you've been here for all these announcements, and now that the Open is over, looking back, what are your, what are your impressions of this entire season so far? Yeah. A couple steps ahead, but I'm happy with how this open season went. The workouts were very. The workouts were. The tests in the open this year were unique, and it was a. Uh, we've been doing this for a while, and it's pretty cool to still be able to put new elements, surprise people, do new things, and at the end of the day though, still test for the fittest alive, still have an inclusive test, and still stay true classic CrossFit. And that's important to me, and that's important to us. All right, I think we got the next straightened out. We'll get to the next, uh, next step here in a second with regionals and the games. I want to talk to Catherine and Sarah really fast. What's it like when you hear a workout and then all of a sudden you have to come up with a strategy and do it? What goes through your head? And anything and for me it's just be kind of like warm and sweating prepared for anything but my coach is out there and he has me do a lot of different movements to prep um, the nervous system and then prepare like get my heart rate up and all that so when you're out there it's are you ready for anything sir how about you uh, I was like what's the workout again <laughs> 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 and it's like oh yeah thrusters and doubles what's the rep scheme <laughs> so it's like yeah, you just get really sweaty and warm, and then you're just prepared for anything. I mean, the adrenaline helps you so much. I was hoping for a one rep max, though. <laughs> I like your shirt. Uh, th thank you. It's new. <laughs> Catherine, back to you. This is the second year now that you've entered the season with a target on your back. What's that like preparing for the rest of the year? Um, just like anything else, um, that's done. It's over. It doesn't help me with this season. I don't get any extra points for um, good placing last year, so it's more just like stay in the moment um, and just keep on training. Yeah. And Sarah, last time I talked to you, you said that you were in the process of looking for a coach. How, how's that going? What's the latest with that? <laughs> um, I decided this year that I wouldn't have a coach. Okay. So, yeah, independent this year. Why is that? Why'd you make that choice? Um, I don't know. I just want to try it. Uh, I stopped working with my coaches in November, and everything's been going so well since then, and I... I just, I'm loving what Why I'm doing. Why not? Oh, I, I didn't mean it like that. I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> I know the people on social media have some questions, so let's send it over to Brooke. What, what are the people on the Facebook saying? Sean, the people are, honestly, the whole time it was really nice because they were loving what was happening. They were loving both the girls, and it really was very equal. Um, there wasn't much. People were not surprised to see thrusters, according yeah. to Facebook Live. They knew it was coming. So a few of the comments that I thought were pretty funny and hit home for me and probably a lot of you was that my lungs are going to bleed, <laughs> which I'm sure you girls can pretty completely yeah. relate to, right? <laughs> the adrenaline hits you and you probably feel that bleeding, that burn right in the beginning and then you just go autopilot. And talking about autopilot, how does that react? How do you, how do you get through that? You know, you, you hit the, you get the fatigue in the beginning and then you just go. Can you talk a little bit about that? That's not all a pilot. <laughs> You're going to want to stop round four or five. You just got to keep going. One more thruster and then move to the double and just start jumping. <laughs> how do you deal with that? I don't know. I just go until he says I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> it's that easy. Yeah. Right? You just keep going. Yeah, it's, it's the best thing is not to think about it. Just go, just go, just go and just count the numbers. Mm -hmm. Um, Laura Collier actually is wondering, do you guys have any advice for people that are learning double unders? Obviously, this is a very double under heavy workout. Some people were mentioning it's only 35, so they're probably not going to pee their pants. It's usually <laughs> a problem. We can sometimes come across. But any recommendations for you? Well, from do you, you. Do you want recommendations from me after the last session? <laughs> yes, yes, we do. Well. <laughs> Um, 
Um, I would say try to have your feet as close as possible so when I'm tired I start jumping out. I, I do not know why that happens. Have your hands close and just use your wrist. Like when you're tired you start using your form, jump higher and everything gets just so much more tired than it should get. I would say if you know that it's gonna like stop you on the double unders, take the thrusters really slow. Don't get your heart rate up so that every time you get to the double unders you're fresh and you're ready to tackle them again. I completely agree, especially because double unders, you can get super nervous and anxious and it just starts to fall apart. I have a little guest. She is from here. Her name is Samantha from CrossFit Big Dane. Hi, Samantha. <laughs> and she has a question for both of you. I'm just curious, which uh, impact did you more during your workout? Was it fatigue or nerves? Um, especially probably during the end, nerves during the end, when it was getting really no, close. No, nerves is before it starts. And then it goes three to one, the clock's going, and, and I'm always in my element once it starts. So definitely fatigue, like as soon as the workout's going. Okay. Sarah, yeah. same thing. I would say nerves in the first three rounds. You're like, <laughs> your heart rate is so high. It gets so high really quick, and uh, then it's just fatigue. Yeah. And then to to think about like, towards the end, right? It got very very close, and you could tell. Yeah. I mean, you got to the rope, right? It's why you made the joke about, yeah. oh, you don't want to learn from me if I messed up on the back. But were the nerves there? Was that kind of what was I, getting a little bit nervous at the end, or more I fatigue towards the end? Like, why am I at the rope before Catherine? Oh shit, I have to go fast! <laughs> because you can do it, because yeah, you yeah. can do it. <laughs> so, uh, it was like, just hurry it up, and then I just rusted too much, and I failed, and I was like, oh, damn it, I failed. <laughs> <laughs> and I failed again, and so, yeah. Uh, thank you, Brooke. Last question you, for Dave here. Of course, end of the Open means that we're going to move on to regionals, ultimately on the games, back here to Madison, Wisconsin. What can people expect to see now as we head to regionals, and then ultimately on to the CrossFit Games? Prepare for the unknown and unknowable. <laughs> Be ready for the regionals and the games. Athletes like this need to look at the regionals and just prepare for that. It's going to be... <laughs> it's going to be good. Yeah, look, look. One thing I want to say about this, these two ladies, this time is ama these times are amazing. I had one individual test this when we uh, programmed it, when I programmed it a few months ago, and uh, he's a great competitor, regional level, and he was in the 10s. And then I had a second, uh, Nicole Carroll, she actually did it for the tips, and she crushed it and did it in nine. And um, this workout is very, de this test is very deceiving, very challenging, and uh, they made it look easy. It is not easy. It's not easy, and we're going to see just how difficult it is coming up in a second. Thanks, Catherine. Thank you, Sarah, for stopping by. Dave, thanks a lot. Roe versus Boz, round five is next. If you're not watching on Facebook Live, get there now. We're going to have a quick break, and then we'll come back with Roe versus Boz, round five. Roe trying to get his second win and make this thing three to two, heading into 2018. Of course, regionals are next. Those start in May. Three weekends. It's going to be a blast. We will see you guys on Facebook Live for Roe versus Boz in just a couple of minutes.